stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Leng. Thank you very much for joining me today. On today's episode, we have a special two-part series about a particular investigator in a particular deck. I wanted to take a look at the investigator and this deck. And so in the first part, we're going to take a look at the deck and some of the strategy behind it. And then in part two, we're going to take it, we're going to have a playthrough and uh, see how it goes. The investigator I wanted to look at today is none other than our lovable urchin, Wendy Adams. Now, I'll be the first to admit that uh, I am a terrible Wendy player. Uh, when I first started the game back in the core set, uh, I was playing her as part of a four-player campaign, and while I recognize how powerful she is with her uh, responsibility that allows you to reveal a chaos token and discard a card from your hand to pull another one, I just never seemed to, to really feel like I was playing her correctly. It, uh, there just seemed to be something off about it. I wasn't sure whether I was supposed to be able to use the the amulet or get it into play so I could get the uh, get it working with the discard pile so I could be playing events or whether I should be just pitching the amulet and relying on her ability or whether I should be going for a more evasion based Wendy build or a uh, you know an, an a more evasion based of Wendy build and so it, it just seemed a little off with her I she I struggled with her and I know there are some some players who swear by her and they love her and and I really wanted to to learn how to play her better so I was casting about on uh, Arkham DB which is a great resource for decks if you haven't had a chance to check it out already uh, to find a deck to to learn how to play Wendy a little bit better and uh, see how she fared in solo play, and I stumbled upon a deck by Sergeant Mook, and Sergeant Mook's deck made some pretty uh, big claims because it it not only had beaten uh, the Knight of the Zealot campaign on hard mode, but he had also killed a Mordoth with Wendy uh, to finish off that, off that campaign. So I was immediately attracted to this deck and and uh, really interested in, in its ability. And uh, I got to wondering whether this deck, how it would fare against the Dunwich Legacy campaign, which was recently released. Uh, because if it had, uh, you know, if the deck had been able to kill the Mordoth, I was wondering how it would fare against the other big bad in the uh, Dunwich Legacy campaign, that being the experiment in extracurricular activity. So in this part of the uh, of the uh, episode, I'd like to take a look at Sergeant Mook's deck, which is, is a great deck. I've had a chance to play it a few times now. It's really fun to play. Uh, very much enjoyed it. And uh, it certainly lives up to all its billing as being able to uh, to take down big bad monsters. I'm going to take a look at that deck and the combo that drives it, and some of the strategy that's involved uh, if you want to take this deck up against uh, extracurricular activity. Now, Sergeant Mook has written a a very detailed analysis of. Uh, the deck and how it fares during the Night of the Zealot campaign and I would recommend that you check that out on Arkham DB. It's a it's a great resource and it gives you a really good idea as to how you know the thought that he put into the card choices and uh, the choices that he made as the campaign went on as to how to expend the experience points and how uh, to change up the deck for for each given c- scenario. Now I'm going to go over the deck here quickly just so you get an idea as, as to what's in it 
and we'll take a look at the combo. Now as you can see here, it has two flashlights. That's pretty standard in most investigator decks uh, that are starting off. Uh, the two knife, uh, those are your backup weapons for the baseball bats down below. They're also very, they also come in handy if you're using them to uh, to protect your other more valuable assets like Leo DeLuca. Uh, it's nice to have a knife out there in case you get one of those asset hate cards like, like Crypt Chill or Pushed Into the Beyond that force you to reshuffle one of your assets back into the deck. Uh, baseball bat is your one of your primary ways that you're going to be able to take down the big bad monsters. It's a little fragile in that you can you can lose it if you draw a skull or the tentacle. Uh, but fortunately, Wendy does have her her repull ability, which mitigates that some somewhat. Uh, Leo DeLuca, he is a great ally, uh, regardless of the deck. In uh, Sergeant Mook's original deck, Leo plays a pretty important role because you need those four actions in order to engage with Umardoth and to be able to take him down in one turn. Uh, he's not as essential uh, when you're going up against the experiment, but he is still... Uh, great to have and if you're able to play him early he makes that scenario a whole lot easier. As for the events we have uh, Look What I Found which is one of your primary ways of picking up clues at high shroud locations. It's it's a great card. Uh, if you fail that check you can pick up your two clues. Backstab is one of the key key components of the combo uh, if you combine backstab with a card like double or nothing, you are able to hit for six damage right off the bat. That makes the experiment a lot easier to take down, and it and it uh, keys off of Wendy's one of Wendy's strongest skills, that being her agility. Emergency cache that's standard in pretty much every investigator deck. Uh, Lucky, another great survivor card. One of the more recent cards to come out is Oops, uh, which uh, appears in this deck. Now, Oops is in this deck solely for the two, for the two uh, fight icons that it provides. Uh, I've never played it for its actual ability, but it is nice to have those extra two fight icons, considering that Wendy has such a low fight to start off with. As for skills, we have Double or Nothing, which is huge. Uh, you can't pull off the combo without it. Uh, hitting for six with your backstab uh, is a tremendous uh, boost to Wendy's offensive capabilities. Uh, I think this is one of the few decks where I've actually got Double or Nothing to work uh, well, uh, as some of you have watched the previous uh, playthroughs with Wendy, or sorry, with uh, Jenny Barnes and uh, Skids O'Toole. Uh, Double or Nothing is a little harder to play. Uh, Guts is in there for mostly scenario specific reasons. It certainly comes in handy in the extracurricular activity where there are many treacheries uh, that key off of the willpower test. Manual Dexterity boosts Wendy's agility for when you're ready to pull off the combo, as does Opportunist. Overpower is two fight icons, which is huge, and Unexpected Courage is an additional two wild icons. So the deck is uh, extremely tight, and Sergeant Mook did a, a terrific job of putting this together. I find when I play it, it uh, it really teaches you to use your cards wisely, and uh, it's a very cheap deck, so there's not a lot of your your tend to build up a lot of resources toward the end of the game, uh, which enables you to play some of the more expensive cards like backstab, and it's it's just a really fun deck to play now. I've mentioned the combo a couple times. Let's take a look at that now. 
This is the basics of the combo. You have your backstab, which is an attack that uses agility instead of fight, and this attack deals plus two damage. So if you play that with in conjunction with double or nothing, you're going to hit for six damage, and you're going to be using Wendy's agility instead of her lowly fight. Now, the problem with double or nothing is that it does double the difficulty of the test, which puts the uh, puts Umordoth at 10 and the experiment at, uh, at uh, 8. So if you're using backstab, you get 1 for the wild icon for double or nothing. You also need to pitch a manual dexterity for 2 additional agility and an unexpected courage for the two additional wild icons, which will give you a 9 versus 8, which uh, is still, it's not, uh, it's not a great uh, total to have because you still are, usually if you're on standard mode, you want, you know, two to be two above of your target, so you can pull that. Uh, Wendy's got that advantage in that she can repull in case you you miss it. Uh, obviously, if you have a couple extra cards in your hand that you can pitch to that that test to do the six damage is great. It's also important to remember that if you pass the test, you get to draw two cards instead of one with manual dexterity due to double or nothing. Uh, which can help fuel the next two tests that you need to make with your baseball bat in order to take down uh, the big bat in one turn. Now one of the cards that is uh, missing from the combo that Sergeant Mook describes in his write-up is Will to Survive. That's the th the four cost, three experience point event with the fight and wild icon that allows you, you play it, it's fast, so until the end of your turn you do not reveal chaos tokens for any skill tests you perform. Obviously this at uh, on hard difficulty or actually any difficulty is a huge is a huge boon to Wendy particularly when you're making that uh, that fight test or that agility to those fight tests or agility tests in order to take down a monster. Not having to reveal chaos tokens is is extremely important to that. Uh, fortunately in extracurricular activity the uh, the chaos bag is is a lot kinder than it is on hard mode and it's a lot kinder than it is at the end of the Night of the Zealot campaign, so uh, not having will to survive in your deck, you're still able to pull off the combo uh, somewhat reliably. I want to take a look at the two uh, the two enemies and see how they compare. The experiment is a four fight, seven hit point, two agility monster abomination elite, while Umordoth is a five fight, six hit point. 6 Agility, Ancient One, and its Elite. Both of them, the experiment gets plus 3 health per investigator, and Umordoth gets plus 4, so they both have 10 hit points if you're playing in solo. They both have similar forced effects. The uh, experiment readies uh, when the enemy phase begins, and Umardoth readies at the end of each investigator's turn. So basically what that means is you cannot uh, evade lock these guys because they will be ready when the enemy phase comes along to deal their damage, which is substantial. The experiment hits for two stamina and two sanity, while Umardoth hits for three of each. One of the, the main differences between these two uh, in how they play is that Umordoth is a hunter and the experiment is not. Uh, so when you're playing uh, the Devourer below, uh, it's important to have, uh, Sergeant Mook makes a, a, the point that it's important to have 
uh, Leo De Luca out because you need to have those four actions in order to move to a Mordas location and then pull off your combo and the two hits with the baseball bat in order to take him down in a turn. That's not as necessary when you're facing off against the experiment because the experiment moves during uh, when Agenda 3A triggers in extracurricular activity. So he's moving during the Mythos phase, not the enemy phase, so you're not taking the damage from him. Uh, if a Mordoth was to move to your location, you're going to be taking that three stamina, three sanity hit uh, each time. So that doesn't give you a whole lot of leeway uh, to take him down if you happen to miss one of those attacks. The experiment, you can sometimes just park yourself at a location and wait for him to come to you as the agenda advances and uh, deal with him when he arrives at your location. I wanted to take a look at uh, extracurricular activity and uh, some of the cards that affect you in this uh, in this scenario you can see here we have Wendy Adams at Miskatonic Quad we have the experiment who typically will begin at the Alchemy Labs once you advance the act or agenda to the appropriate spot typically what I try to do in this scenario when I'm playing Wendy is I like Wendy to basically build up her resources and cards and then you want to head over to the Orn Library and the Humanities Building. The Orn Library has uh, one clue that you need to pick up and that will give you the one victory point. It is a three shroud location and the Humanities Building is also a three shroud location and there are two clues. Now you need these three clues in order to advance Act 1A to Act 2A. And what I found very helpful in this is that I try not to move into these locations unless I am fairly confident that I can uh, pick up those clues the same turn I get there so I do not leave clues on the table. One of the reasons you don't want to do that, uh, you don't want clues on the table, is because there are several thralls in the encounter deck and they spawn at the location with the most clues. So if you're able to pick up clues at locations the when you arrive there, that in uh, during the subsequent Mythos phase, if you draw a Thrall, uh, you're not required to spawn it at your location. And so I like dumping them in the Administration Building because that is the location in the game that I have no uh, intention on going to. So that takes away a couple of, uh, of monsters that you have to face, and uh, which means less combat for Wendy which means that uh, she can save her cards for uh, setting up the combo to take down the experiment. So typically I'll move into the Orn Library uh, and then use the two, spend the two actions to grab the clue there. Uh, if I've got a Look What I Found or a Lucky uh, that's, or a Flashlight, that's always helpful. Uh, then you move into the Humanities Building, grab those two clues in there, and then you're set up to go on to the next act. And what I like to do there is I like to head over to the Students' Union Building where there are another two clues, and if you can pick those up the same turn that you arrive there, say move from the Humanities Building to the Quad, maybe take a turn to draw a couple cards or grab some resources and then move into the Students' Union building and grab those two clues. You need those two clues in order to find Jazz Mulligan who will be shuffled into the encounter deck. So you need to grab those two clues and then take two actions to spend them to discard ten cards from the encounter deck. 
Now, if you're lucky, you'll get jazz within the first one or two. Uh, you'll get jazz the first time or the second time you spend those clues. If you don't get him, then you're going to have to head over to the science building and pick up a clue there. It's the easiest bet because it's only a two shroud location and there's one clue there. Sometimes the timing can be a little tight depending on how things went earlier in the game, but if you're lucky enough to pull uh, Jazz at the Students' Union building, that enables you to make the parlay test, which is Intellect 3, to take control of Jazz. Once you've taken control of Jazz, all the locked buildings are open to you, so I typically head down to the dormitory, which is a one shroud location with three clues. Uh, so Wendy shouldn't have too much trouble picking up all the clues at the dormitory and that will give you uh, two experience points at least and it does give you an out if uh, the scenario has turned against you. Perhaps you've drawn some unlucky uh, encounter cards or you've drawn uh, the Yithian observers or probably the worst pull, the wizard of yogg who will, who is a hunter and will follow you around. And so you have to find a way to deal with him. Uh, this will give you a way out so you can end the, end the scenario with 2 XP if you clear that dormitory. So if Wendy is able to get to the dormitory and uh, grab those clues w and with Jazz. At this point you'll be getting towards uh, the late game and uh, you should be able to, you should have your combo set up or you should be very close because the experiment will start moving toward the dormitories at this point. At this point in the game it's, uh, you're just hoping you can set up and uh, you can wait for the experiment to come to you or you can move to the experiment if you have Leo DeLuca out um, so you can spend one of your four actions to move into the experiments uh, location and then the other three actions to pull off the backstab and the two attacks with the baseball bat. Uh, typically one of the challenges is um, agenda to be we'll cap your uh, your hand size at five uh, but that's not too difficult to play around and it this uh, agenda only has three has a doom threshold of three so it goes by fairly quickly uh, so typically what I like to do is hover at that five uh, five hand size until uh, uh, agenda 2A advances to three and then draw up so I can have my maximum hand size for when I'm ready to fight the experiment so I can uh, discard cards as necessary to Wendy's special ability and uh, uh, if I need to redraw uh, when I'm fighting it. Uh, I mentioned the importance of trying to pick up clues at the locations uh, on the turn you arrive there. One of the other nice things about doing that is it uh, eliminates the issue with locked doors. Again, locked doors go on the location with the most clues on them. So if you happen to have uh, no clues on your location, you get to choose where that goes. And again, I like to dump that on the administration building. So the administration building can be full of locked doors and thralls and, and all, all the cards you don't want to deal with uh, during this scenario. Speaking of cards that you don't want to deal with, uh, there are a number of encounter cards that uh, can make this uh, scenario challenging when you're trying to assemble your combo. The first of course is Beyond the Veil. 
this uh, card puts a timer on the game because if you deck yourself you are going to take 10 damage which is difficult if not impossible for many investigators to survive now it is possible to survive a beyond the veil trigger with wendy if you have jazz mulligan and and leo de luca in play they have enough uh stamina between them to weather that hit uh, wendy will be severely injured but you can survive a trigger if you happen to have both of them out now there are cards in the encounter deck uh, I believe it's the hand of Afar Goman, uh, which is uh, which will turn all damage into direct damage, which won't allow you to do that. But I have that card is one that I I rarely see, uh, so it's not too big a concern. So you are trying to you are in a bit of a race against uh, Beyond the Veil to try to take down the experiment before this thing triggers. Uh, because that will make it, if you s happen to miss one of your attacks, you may need to take an attack from the experiment. And he hits for two stamina and two sanity, and you don't have a lot of uh, stamina, stamina and sanity to spare uh, if you're going to be taking that kind of damage. One of the other cards in the deck that's a big pain for this deck is Visions of Future Past. It is a test willpower 5 and for each point you fail by you have to discard the top of your deck. Obviously this is bad because uh, you could be discarding parts of your combo or cards that you or other cards that you need um, but especially the combo pieces can be particularly painful to lose. Fortunately, Wendy has a, a willpower of four, and there are a couple of copies of Guts in the deck and Unexpected Courage if you need to pitch one of those to try to boost your test up. Not so much uh, to always pass it, but just so you're only discard, you know, if you do fail it, you're only discarding one or two cards. Uh, off the top of your account, off of off the top of your deck. Now, if you do lose part of your combo piece, you can, if you happen to have Wendy's amulet, you can uh, play that and play parts of that. You know, something like backstab. You could play from your discard pile if it happens to be the top event. So if you lose a key combo piece you're not entirely hooped uh, there is a chance that you can still pull it off although it will be a little trickier another card that wendy doesn't want to see is the arcane barrier again this is a willpower test and if you fail you either have to cancel your move or discard the top five cards of your deck in some ways this can be a lot worse than Visions of Future Past because you have to discard the full five cards and uh, you can see a lot of your combo pieces disappear into the uh, discard pile if you fail these checks. Fortunately it is a willpower four check and Wendy is uh, well equipped to pass that if necessary. I've found in my practice games that uh, probably the worst place to get an arcane barrier is the Miskatonic Quad because you will have to pass through there uh, several times throughout the game. Um, it would be much better if you, if you did draw an arcane barrier to draw it in the Humanities Building or in the Oren Library one of those locations where you're only planning to be there to pass through it once during the game. And it, it is possible for Wendy to pass this and not discard the top five cards. Finally, there is Terror from Beyond, which is the card that forces you to choose one of the card types, asset, event, and skill, and then you have to discard each card in your hand that is of the chosen type. This, uh, there's not a whole lot you can do to prevent this card. You, uh, 
obviously will have to look at your hand at the time. Uh, the problem is parts of the combo are events, some are skills, uh, most are skills actually, so it could work out that uh, you know you choose maybe asset and you're able to to sneak by if you've got your baseball bat down already uh, you might your probably your best bet is to call asset and that way you get to preserve the event and skill cards in your hand which are key to pulling off the combo typically in this as I mentioned before the chaos bag is fairly kind to you this early in the Dunwich Legacy cycle uh, a lot of the uh, if this is your first uh, scenario in that campaign the skulls a minus one the cultist is a minus one although you probably will have uh, ten or more cards in your discard pile so it is a, it will probably be a minus three uh, but fortunately Wendy does have her repull ability so that can mitigate that uh, somewhat. So that is a look at the extracurricular activity scenario. Uh, it is an interesting scenario to play with uh, the combo Wendy deck that Sergeant Mook put together. It's a lot of fun to play. Uh, in part two of this video, we will uh, do a playthrough and see how the combo Wendy deck fares against the experiment. We'll see if we can't take down the big bad with her uh, backstab and double baseball bat to the head tactic. That's going to do it for me. Uh, definitely check out part two. It will be up uh, shortly after this one. Uh, if you enjoyed this uh, episode, please give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to be notified about future content here at the Whisper in Darkness, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. So definitely drop me a line, leave me a comment if there's something I forgot. For the Whisper in Darkness, this is Man from Lang. Uh, until the stars are right, happy investigating.